Hi folks, Roland Martin here. Hey, today we're going to talk about a special YouTube adventure that's uh, really close to my heart. You know, I'm a professional fisherman. I travel all around the country. I go to boat shows and I go to tournaments and, and I do all sorts of things in public. And there's one thing that's always coming up. People are always asking me this one question time and time again almost every day. They say, Roland, if you just had one lure to bass fish with, what would it be? Well, I've always told them, the, the, for the last five or six years, I've told them the same thing. A five inch, 297 Cinco. <laughs> well, any kind of plastic worm, but a plastic worm is really, really the king. You know, from Connecticut to California, nothing can s surpass the plastic worm for just an all season lure. In other words, it works a little bit in the spring, you know, all summer long. It works a little bit in the fall, a little bit in the winter. There's no other lure that's so consistent as a plastic worm. Now, people say, okay, Roland, you know, why are you always talking about a Senko? Okay, I, I fish other worms. I fish the, the Zoom worms. I fish uh, gambler worms. I fish all the other worms. I test them and try them out and always come back to this 5-inch 297 green pumpkin Senko. Now, I'll tell you, I'm lucky enough to work for Yamamoto, and they make the Senkos. I'm lucky enough to be out to Page, Arizona, and actually watch the Native Americans out there. For the most part, it's a, a couple hundred Indians and Native Americans that, that are behind the uh, the scenes making these lures, and the, and and the big presses work. And of all the sales that they have, this is the number one thing. In fact, if they just had one one thing to sell, it would be a 297 green pumpkin cinco. They sell more of these lures, this one lure, than anything else. That's not just the last year. That's for the last 20 years. This 297 has been the number one color. The cinco, five inch cinco, has been the worldwide number one lure. Okay, let's get started. I'm down here deep in the Everglades. It's, uh, it's the middle of the summer. I have one lure, a cinco. I'll show you what, how I rigged it up, first of all. I have the, the brand new Pro Series rod, my favorite. That's a really cool deal. That's my worm rod. 50 pound braid. Now, I'm using 50 pound braid because, see, I'm throwing across this canal and I'm liable to hook a fish in those reeds. And so I need something to pull. Plus, I don't want to lose all my lures. So I'm just going to use a 50 pound braid, straight line, a number four EWG hook, five inch Cinco, and I'm hooking it up with the, with the new eight to one Solus reel. Okay, let's get started. What the, the, the key to this whole day, day is making nice casts. It's kind of unlucky to catch them the first cast, so I'm just going to make a cast and just hope, I don't know if I'm going to catch one or not. That's just to watch my line. Now, notice I'm a line watcher. I'm holding my rod up. Okay. Just watching that line, watching that line, watching that line. The old worm trick. The old worm trick, just letting it drift along. A little bit of current here today, that's kind of a good thing. It's the uh, middle of the summer, a little bit of current, it's kind of sweeping that rod, sweeping that, that worm down this canal a little bit. That's good. I didn't throw quite far enough over to the, to the weed edge though. Let's pull it in and I'll show you, make another cast a little bit farther. That's it, that's it right there. Okay. Again, hold the rod up high. I'm glad I didn't catch one the first cast. I don't like catching them. It's kind of, a, kind of like a bad luck deal. <laughs> that would be a big one though. That's why I have 50 pound braid. You never know when you're gonna get a really big fish. You know, you, down here in Florida, you know, eight pound fish are, are fairly common. And, uh, so I'm just kind of just hoping, and I'm anticipating catching a big fish, of course. So I have my drag adjusted just right, okay? In fact, a little too tight. I'll loosen it up a little bit. One lure, it's not the best thing. I mean, if I were normally fishing, I'd have two or three rods, I'd have a frog, I'd have a top water plug, I'd have a spinner bait, I'd have a couple other other lures, but so many people have asked if I just had one lure and one rod, 
like so many people have, what would it be? Well, okay, let's, well, I've got it. It's right here. It's the Cinco. I think he's got it, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. He's got it, that's just a little one. Not much to him. That one probably won't make the film. <laughs> probably won't make it. But you know, you never know. That's the thing about a worm. You, you, it's impossible to tell. One of the biggest bass I ever caught in my whole entire life was at Santee Cooper. I was fishing a plastic worm with a guy and I thought I knew a lot about how to tell a fish when, when, you, when they bite. And I felt this tap, tap, tap. I said, now nah, that's a little fish, that's a little fish. Well, what the tap, tap, tap was, was the gullet of the big old 11 and a half pounder that was eating, eating on the worm, it was 11 and a half pound bass. He was eating on it, and the gullet was going tick, 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 tick. And so I said, that's ah, just a little one. I set the hook and it was the biggest bass I think I've ever caught out of Santee Cooper. Just, so what do I know? You know, you make these statements like that. Well, that's a little one, and it happened to be the biggest one I ever caught there. <clears throat> anyway, okay, let's get this line straight and see what happens. I put a new worm on. We'll just see what happens. You know, we probably can come down here a little bit farther. You notice I have these long pants on. I, there's mosquitoes and there's little things that can bite you. I'm looking out for snakes and I'm looking out for alligators, but you know, it's been my experience that people say, well, aren't you afraid of alligators? And I'm saying, not really because they're more afraid of me than I am of them. And I've never been bothered out here. I've never heard of anybody being bothered out here. There's hundreds of alligators out here. Nobody seems to, to ever get bothered by an alligator. Alligators, they'll come after your fish and they'll try to catch a fish that you might have hooked. But as far as eating you, they don't do that. <laughs> okay, let me just get a nice cast right to that spot right there. And I'll see what happens, come right there. Okay. There's one. I got him. 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 He's down in the weeds. That's why you need a heavy line. I don't know if I still have him or not. I have I have heavy line. I got the heavy line. I don't know if I have the fish. The fish might have got off. He just took it and ran with it. I don't know if the fish is on there or not. Oh, oh, I guess he's there. <laughs> he's underneath all that. He's just a small one. He's underneath all those weeds. Now that's a different kind of weed. I'll just show you that weed real quick. It pays to know your weeds. And one of the weeds, that's a, what they call peppergrass. Really, really a good weed. Okay, get that one back. Let me just show you that peppergrass. It's, it's my favorite weed. Of all the weeds that I've ever found uh, here in South Florida, or for anywhere for that matter, this peppergrass is the best weed. It grows underwater, and it's a really, really a good weed. So look at that real close, because that's some really good weed. And there's a patch of it over there. That bass took that worm just the second it got into that patch dove into that thing. Sometimes I can throw to these edges and just catch them right there on that edge right there. There's a strike. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, just a little one. Not much to them. You know, I'm overpowering them. <laughs> Hey, that's all right. <laughs> you never know when that big one's going to bite. You just can't. You just can't tell. So I'm just, I'm just setting the hook hard on on all these little ones, and hopefully I'll catch a great big one in the process. But I don't know. I got plenty of worms. Got plenty of worms. Plenty of hooks. You know, it's really kind of an inexpensive way to fish. If, like again, I I, I remelt these worms. And, and, and reconstitute them, and it just costs a few, few cents of electricity. The molds cost about $75, but it's worth it in the long run. Okay. 
Let's try one right straight across the canal. I'll try one right over there. Right there. Don't. Right into the into the into the grass. You have to kind of pull it loose of the grass. Watch that line. You know, unweighted fish is completely different than a weight. Now, I might try a weight after a while. Right now, I know that they're, it's early in the morning and they're up on the, on the edges of these weeds. So I don't need to go deep because they're kind of shallow. But as the day progresses, I have a whole variety of weights and there's something I want to tell you about weights. It's kind of a, kind of a mainstay of the deal. If there's just zero wind like right now, you don't need much weight. In fact, no weight. If, if, it, if a fish you like we're fishing. But if the wind blows, say, five to six miles an hour, something on that order, sometimes I'll go to the smallest little weight, this one sixteenth of an ounce. There's a strike. Watch this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a strike. I'll go to a five sixteenths or even a, a I'm sorry. So if the wind's just barely blowing, I'll go to a sixteenth of an ounce. Now, as the wind gets a little higher and the wind starts to blow, say, uh, say 10 miles an hour, I'll go an eighth of an ounce or even five sixteenths of an ounce. And as the wind gets up over 10 miles an hour, say 15 miles an hour, ow, ow, that's a sharp hook. 15 miles an hour, I'll go to a quarter ounce and sometimes a, even a five sixteenths, which is a little heavier than a quarter. Now. When it gets over, say, 15 or 20 miles an hour, it really gets really blowing. Sometimes you got to go all the way up to a 3 eighths of an ounce. But now the problem with the 3 eighths of an ounce is you lose your action of the worm. It's good for deep water. You can kind of feel it with the wind. But I hate to fish 3 eighths of an ounce, and occasionally when it really blows hard, I'll go even heavier. But when the wind blows 25 miles an hour, go home. Don't fool with the worm. It's not a worm fishing time. It's 25 miles an hour is not the good time. You don't want to do that. Okay. 297, five inch green pumpkin. Now, that worm's a little torn up. I just caught a bass there. I'm, I sometimes do this. Now here, look, watch this. I'll, I'll take it, and, and there's nothing sacred about the back end. I can just cut it just a little teeny bit off and just hook it to the back. That's another way of doing it. Just come right down through it about three quarters of an inch, turn it on the uh, shank of the hook, and then just bury it right in there and see what happens. Make another cast right up that bank. I threw right in there. Oop, that was kind of not quite far enough. That might, that might work. That might work. Let's see what happens. There's a strike. There's a strike. Ah, little one. Oh, small one. Small one. <laughs> oh well. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> hey guys. Hey, Roland Martin. How you doing? What's your name? Nathan. Nathan. Hey, Nathan. Everybody call me Rob. Roland. How you doing? Hey, well, you guys really caught some good fish, huh? Yeah. yeah. Would you? I saw you catch a couple four and five pounders right there. Yeah, I got about yeah. twelve down there. Twelve? He just caught twelve. Yeah. Can you get him on the worm? You got him on a wacky worm. Are you using the Cinco's? No, using... I'm using the uh, Zoom. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm using a Cinco right now, but it's working good. Uh, anyway, yeah, the wacky worm works. Do you have any weight on there? No. No, no weight. Just, no. just, just no weight. Okay, well, that's a good deal. Yeah. You guys fish around here a lot, don't you? Quite a bit. See, that's just like a Senko. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's just the that's same thing. Yeah. 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 I was doing a little show, show them about, oh, I, actually the film that I was making right now, talking about how the Senko, which is like the worms yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. is the number one lure. You mm -hmm. know, really it's the number one. I'm rigging it up different than you are, but that wacky rig is a good way to go too. Yeah. 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 Well, Nathan, you're out here a lot, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I see you. I see you out here a bunch of times. What's the biggest fish you've caught out here? Eight. Eight. Yeah. He got nine. Uh, nine. Yeah. I've caught a couple eight and nines. Not. 
I'm not, I haven't broke 10 yet, not here, but I'm, I'm working at it. <laughs> hey, it, we watched watch your film. Oh, okay. Like, that was our inspiration. <laughs> okay. God, he, he out there won't hear any get him like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, guys. There's one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, sir, son. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Not real big, but I set the hook pretty fast on him. If Again, I'm trying to show you what the strikes look like, and, and so consequently I'm getting some of these things are getting, uh, they're swallowing it because I let them take it too long. This is the hot summertime, and you got to be careful about that. There's a good one. Oh, look at that big one. Big, big bass. Yes, sir, son. I got a good one. I got a good one. Okay. There's some big fish in here. Some big fish. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Beautiful bass. Beautiful bass. Beautiful bass. <laughs> I knew there's some around. Good. Nice one. Okay. Sometimes there's more than one. Sometimes there's a bunch of them. Oh yeah, oh that's a better one. Yeah, come on bass, come on bass, come on bass. Not real big, it's bigger than normal. Come on bass, come on bass. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Well, you know, I haven't caught any real big fish today. A bunch of medium-sized ones. But I have shown you a lot of the ABCs of fishing this Cinco. The best lure that you can ever find. If you only had one lure to fish, fish the Cinco. But anyway, it's, uh, it's been an interesting day. Lots of fish. Plenty of action. Beautiful, beautiful day. And so, folks, thanks for watching. You know, your subscriptions are so great. I really appreciate all that you do. And uh, I'm up over 100,000 now, and my advertisers are happy. And golly, I'm happy. And it's just a lot of fun doing this. So we'll see you again soon, and thanks for watching.